Great. Thanks very much, um, Pierre and Frederick, for an inspiring set of examples of how and when citizen action makes a difference in anti-corruption. I think it's really important to build this body of information and evidence. And personally, but also institutionally, uh, we are increasingly persuaded about the value of such initiatives. Um, Pierre referred to the fact that we have had the, the GTF, the Governance and Transparency Fund, in place for nearly five years. A huge amount of learning which we're trying to distill at the moment about what conclusions we can draw from that. So there are 38 other um, coalitions, rather like the one that Pierre and his colleagues have been leading across the world. So huge amounts of information about what works, why and how. And we're trying ourselves to learn from that body of evidence. We've recently set up something called Making All Voices Count, um, working with the Omidyar network, uh, the Swedes and the Americans. Where we're putting £40 million into precisely what Frederick was highlighting at the end, the importance of understanding and closing the loop, the feedback that citizens provide to shape reform. So I think these approaches are now gaining common currency. Um, where I would perhaps raise some questions is in three areas. One is, can we be clearer about making generalizations on what works, why, and how? And the other side of that coin, can we draw insights from our failures? Um, we should learn those as much as celebrating success. And indeed, we know it's not always easy. It's tough. It's politically contentious. Um, there are strong and violent reactions from power holders. There is political resistance. So are there a particular set of conditions under which citizen initiatives, such as those we've heard about, really take root and have the impact we've heard about? The second question I'd raise um, is about the quality of evidence. There's an enormous number of case study insights coming out that Pierre's book summarizes. Um, at the other end of a spectrum, which we have a mass of, of comparative ca micro case material. And on the other end of a spectrum, in terms of independent verification, we have a tiny amount of evidence. In fact, I only know one experiment which has actually rigorously sought to set up a control versus an intervention in the field of community anti-corruption in Indonesia. And some of you will be familiar with that study on, on rural roads. I'm not suggesting that that is better than the case study evidence, but I would suggest we need to subject more of the evidence we are hearing about, much of which is collected by the implementers, much of which is based on self-reporting, but we do need a better way of capturing in a more systematic way, this evidence, and sub subjecting it to independent scrutiny, verification, to determine how valid are these findings across different contexts. Under which particular sets of institutional political contexts can we see these impacts having a really significant effect? How far can we be sure that the effects we're seeing can be attributed to the citizen movement itself as opposed to a number of other enabling conditions, such as those we heard about from, from Pierre's summary findings. So I guess my plea here is we need to celebrate the success we've heard about. We need to learn more from the failures that we also know about. But we also need to open up more to looking at other ways of gauging the impact of these initiatives, um, all the way through from what we have now through to more comparative rigorous studies. We have some opportunities opening up here. Um, the JPAL um, initiative, the governance initiative, is putting together a series of um, more rigorous um, studies around looking at um, examples of, of anti-corruption efforts. And they're looking for partners to help work with them on that. So I would throw out uh, an opportunity to you both, saying team up with these organizations, work with them to enable you to demonstrate uh, the strength of the evidence that you have to sometimes a more skeptical audience. Most of us in the room will be willing adherents 
Um, I would suggest, actually, there are many people out there who may be more sceptical about the mm. quality of this evidence. Uh, we've recently initiated a big study um, hosted at the Kennedy School through the TAI, um, which is trying to understand one strand of its work around transparency reforms in the health sector. So trying to bring together findings in particular sectors where these experiments are taking place is really important. The second one is, is really on the cost-benefit. Um, and I don't want to sound too technocratic, but I, was, I think there's some imp really impressive evidence that both Pierre and Frederick put to us. And more rigorous evidence helps us be even better placed to demonstrate how the leverage effect is so powerful. I completely buy it, and I've seen this in applied uh, budget work very closely, that it is possible to invest relatively modest amounts of money to achieve very significant outcomes. And if they're quantified, it appeals even more to those in government, both in uh, developing countries and their partners like us in the donor community, to demonstrate the strength and leverage of this body of work. So let's try and nail down even better some of the really impressive information you're collating on the modest cost versus the very significant benefits. Um, a third set of points I wanted to make um, are around um, the explanatory variables. It's still a little unclear, I would suggest, about what are the major factors at work that help to explain the success that you are documenting in very different kinds of contexts. Why do citizen movements gain strength and organisational effectiveness in some environments to pursue successful anti-corruption efforts, and in the others, they get nowhere? And it's again back to my point about being a bit more open about the factors that explain failure as much as understanding success. Um, is it to do with the broad enabling environment? And the reason I emphasize that broad enabling environment is to take issue with something Pierre said here. And I really think that we must be careful not to say it's an either or. It's not only, I would suggest, a binary opposition between only citizen-led movements succeed and institutional reform efforts <coughs> supported by governments will fail. I think that's too simple. I think it's really important to identify where is the space for governments and reformers in governments of the sort you spoke about, supported by donors, to open up and create a more enabling environment for these efforts to succeed. <coughs> we know that individual reformers in agencies which can make a difference are few and far between. We can often name those reform champions in individual countries. But why is it it's been so difficult to spread a culture of accountability and transparency and reform within institutions? I do think the Open Government Partnership is a huge opportunity to do more of that and to get more buy-in. That is an institution which has huge government buy-in, significant public commitments on tackling corruption and improving transparency, and is rooted in civil society action. There's a really good example of virtuous and complementary work by governments, by civil society, and with donor support. And donor support coming both from private foundations as well as, as donor governments. I can name many examples of where there have been successful governance reforms in which governments have played a role. Uh, we've been collecting evidence, and I have colleagues in the room from our anti-corruption teams. We've been really systematically looking at what does the evidence tell us about what does work in terms of the institutions to tackle the problem of corruption. We do know there is actually some quite reasonable evidence showing how public financial management reforms have had traction. We also know that supreme audit institutions can be significant in the fight against corruption. We know also that they can't work in isolation. They have to work in a virtuous and complementary way with citizen initiatives. So I would really guard against the either or and rather emphasize the importance of looking at how citizen movements can thrive and prosper and achieve impact in combination with the institutions which have been created as part of the anti-corruption effort. We know many of those have not been effective. 
we also know many of the reasons why they've not been effective. And we're trying to deepen our research and knowledge about why that is the case. So at the moment in DFID, we're um, embarking on producing a very comprehensive evidence product, which is trying to pull together the evidence on what we know about the nature and causes of corruption. Secondly, pulling together better the impacts it has in different domains and sectors, as well as on the economy and on individual welfare. And finally, trying to pull together better what evidence we have on work, what works where and how. And when I saw Pierre this morning, he quite rightly um, berated me for saying that uh, a major review that we commissioned um, through IDS a few years ago didn't pick up this wealth of material which is now collected together in his book. So we do know there's a lot of evidence out there, often in grey literature, often sometimes hidden away, uh, and not in the public domain, um, that we need to pull together more systematically. So we're trying to do our part to do that and identify where are the gaps in research and evidence that we need to seek to fill. A final concluding point, um, we heard glimmers of, of references to new technology, but I didn't hear very much in terms of how it's used as an integral tool in practice. This is the new frontier, as many of us know from practice. But what we really don't know is, is how are new technologies being used to further leverage and enhance the impacts we've heard about through effective citizen organisation in a much more significant and systematic way. So I think that's probably where we need to go next in many ways in thinking through how the efforts that we've heard so much about on the ground combine with opening up and deepening the reform space within government and then harnessing the power of new technology in an incredibly impactful way. Thank you very much to all of you for behaving so well and keeping to schedule and for also um, very wonderful, insightful comments and insights. Um, I will now open the floor for questions and just to remind all of you that uh, you are on the record and uh, please identify yourself by name and affiliation. Um, and if you can just keep your comments or questions brief so that we can have as many people participating as possible. There should be a roaming microphone, I hope. 